Let's do a quick, what I would call, upgrade. We're going to remove this vacuum-operated petcock from a 2001 Bandit GSF 600 and replace it with this Yamaha one. This is just a simple on-off petcock. On-off. This one has reserve, prime, and on. Prime is full bore. It's the same as on on this one. Reserve is going to pull from all the way from the bottom of the tank, and on is going to be a longer uh, inlet, which will pull until about, eh, it actually just stops pulling pretty early, probably like 110 miles out of a 160 mile tank, something like that. So what we're going to have to do is pull this thing off, drain enough fuel out of the tank, and you'll see what's been happening. It's continuing to pour fuel out, even though it shouldn't be leaking anything, so I'm going to end up losing this vacuum line, and I'm going to need either a number three JIS to go in here and take these two bolts off, or you can also take it off with a number 10. So we'll be removing the necessity of having this vacuum line and we will be putting a fuel line on there. So you can see the fuel line is actually going to have a slightly different inlet. So if you're using the stock fuel line, you may have to get some new fuel line. And what I use, and I think the one that I currently have on the bike is gonna be fine, but this is just 5 16 fuel line. It's nice and pliable. This 20 year old stuff, is you're probably going to want to replace this. Bolt with a washer. Here we have the stock petcock, which can be rebuilt so that this thing will stop leaking. I rebuilt this a couple years ago, but it's started to fail again so I'm just going to replace it. You can see this here is the reserve circuit so it's going to pull all the way to the bottom and this is the standard circuit so unless the fuel is above this line it won't pull anything so that's where you get your difference. That's how the reserve works on one of these petcocks. So all we're going to have to do is put in our new Yamaha one. I think this is off like a Raptor some 2VN-24500-02. You will lose a little bit of usability with this as this has a long lever that goes on it and I'll show you when it's on the bike you're gonna lose this long lever so you're gonna have to get your hands in there a little bit further when you're actually gonna turn this on and off with the new one so ideally these should be the same gasket size and everything I should be able to just plop this one in once I take this shielding off this is the only fuel filter on this bike there is no inline if you wanted to put one you could actually splice one in at this point I'm not going to I'm going to clean up that surface first so it mates better and then I'm going to put this one on all right now we're going to reuse the two bolts and washers that we pulled off from the old petcock I'm not going to replace the bolt or the washer you could replace the washer the only one that I have that matches it is a copper one so I don't want to do that actually I want to leave yep okay I got that to off so I'll send that through and I will put this into here and I'll come with my number three and I will tighten these up there we go new petcock on make sure it is in off and now we're going to transfer this over to the tank before we put the tank back on the bike one of the things that we're going to want to do is on carburetor number four here we are going to have to block off this vacuum nipple here and I just use I believe a 7 30 seconds works right over the top of that there so now this one is blocked off that is where the vacuum operated petcock was previously the other thing if we were going to replace the fuel line this is it and the connection is straight down so we should be able to go in and connect this now and there should be a little clip once we get that the routing on this is going to be slightly different before it was going in like this now it's going to be like this so if you had a preformed stock one it's going to be harder to bend it since i got a bunch of extra space I shouldn't have any issues. You know, before I get too far ahead of myself, I should probably actually make sure it works. So one of our positions is off, the other is on. Full bore, there we go. That's all we want, off and on. I'll come over and show you what this looks like, but that'll work. I'll be honest, I don't, I don't actually like the amount of stress that that bend is going to take now. So the fuel line, I can get it on there, and I can put it on, and I can get the clip over it. But with that 90 degree, so I can leave it there, and I could work the clip over it. I don't like the amount of stress that's going to be on that fuel line. I'm going to show you. 
show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to be able to finish this. I'm not actually going to be able to finish this today. But I think I'm going to put a 90 degree barb. Or barb. Yeah, a 90 degree 516 on there. That way I can take off a lot of that stress that that thing's going to have. This is the most dialed in I've ever felt this bike. And I didn't do anything over the winter that could have changed it. All I did was clean up all the electrical connections, change the oil, and I changed this petcock. Now, this is a little bit of a pain in the ass. Um, I didn't put the barb in there yet. What I did is I just used a clamp to put it on there. I just wanted to, I just wanted to go out quick, but it is a little bit tough to get your hand in there and to hit the lever to turn it on and off. I don't really think there's much I can do about that. I don't think I can attach a longer lever onto it. I may just live with it, but I'm much happier having a manual petcock on there.